Good morning, good afternoon, good evening guys and welcome to another video of Diving Trader. My name is Daniel and today guys we're doing an update on Danimo Scientific, uh, ticker symbol DNMR. Those of you who follow my channel know that I'm a keen investor, a shareholder on Danimo. I have been for quite a while now, I believe in this company for the long term. Uh, irrespective of the news that's been received recently, uh, I mean, we're going to go into a look at the uh, the first quarter presentation to see if it's good or not. Uh, but we've also been receiving these these uh, bearish reports, or should I say these bearish reports? These these articles that uh, come out to sort of try and scare the investors off. Uh, and I, I still think this is an idea for a lot of people to be uh, a strategies for making this company drop, lose its price and then to buy okay because I, I don't see any reason why the company should be having prices that they are at the moment suffering so badly been shorted uh but that's the way it is that's the way it works and that's what we have to accept so we'll we'll go in and we'll have a look before we go into the first quarter we're, what we're going to do is going to have a look at the uh, a little bit on the bad news i always like to leave the bad news at the beginning we're going to the, the, the first quarter presentation and then we'll finish up on prices okay we'll look at the price action to see our support and resistance levels and see where levels are uh, good for getting in or, or for getting out it depends uh, i've always said uh, right from the beginning this is a long-term hold for me uh, so yeah so regardless of what's happening at the moment uh, i've been taking advantage most recently by um averaging uh, in on the on the on the cheap prices that we've been receiving seen recently so i think it's been a great opportunity to be buying and uh, so yeah so let's have a look first of all before we go in let's have a look at these uh, this news so these are sort of the articles that come out uh, yeah these are the articles and there's been loads of them uh, bear in mind that anything has a wire.com anything that's related to wire uh, so when I say wire let me show you properly so here so here we go this is PR and the wire these are this is not always reliable we cannot always take this as being uh, uh, truthful information always you always have to be a bit wary about anything that's news wire or anything wire related um, regardless of whether it's true or not uh, it's still this is the same article this is the same sort of information that's been circulating for the last couple of months uh, and it's basically based on their mis mis uh, uh, interpretation shall I say or their ways of the how they've talked about their product and this people uh, or companies or lawyers that are, are suing them accordingly on that basis okay so uh so yes yeah, so we've got another one here robin's llp announces that dynamo scientific is being sued for misleading shareholders so so yeah so this is a little bit of what's happening it's still going on you probably see an article on this every every now and again uh at least once a week and uh, whether this is good or bad uh, i do not know but I still believe in this company that they have something that's quite solid for the long term uh, uh, and it's been scientifically proven. OK, so they have information to back this up. Uh, so I, I've talked about this in many videos and I don't really want to go into talk about it. But people ask me, is it worrying? Uh, do you, oh, should I sell? It's completely up to you, to be honest. It's really up to you. I'm not a financial advisor, so I'm not going to tell people what to do. But I will tell you what I'm doing. And what I'm doing is staying a hold. I'm keeping hold of my shares. And like I said, I've just been buying in recently uh, to take advantage of these uh, cheap prices that we see at the moment. So again, let's have a look at the results. So let's have a look at the results. So this is published on their web page. This, uh, this is actually up until the third quarter. Okay, uh, sorry, the first... Uh, March the 31st, so this is actually the uh, the first quarter. And we can go in and have a look at a little bit of information. Let's go and have a look at the, the key messages that they announced. So, uh, Danima, uh, market leadership in research. So this is quite good. This is sort of uh, drums in. If you haven't seen my first video, what Danima is all about, uh, this video will also help you if you're new to, uh, to Danima. Uh, now, Danima, just before I go in to look at this in more detail, basically Danima is a, a, has a scientific or a, a patent product that's a, a plastic that uh, is biodegradable okay so it's not plastic it's actually called nodax and it's a a, a product a, a chemical compound that disintegrates in, when it's in contact with water uh, so uh, in terms of recycling plastics 
we've get all that pollution all that out there it's a, it's a solution to the future uh, there are other companies that have other similar features but this one really is uh, quite unique compared to other competition because uh, like i said it biodegrades very quick uh, and this is a really a solution to the future okay so go in and have a look at my first video if you want to see a little bit more about but by the company so the market research, uh, so uh, sorry, uh, paint and protect Nodax, Nodax technology is the core of our application development. Customers trust Nodax as a true solution to their ESG commitments. Okay, now this is a sort of thing, uh, this has always been a bit worrying actually, uh, and it's the commercial scale, the way they can actually scale this up to meet the demand, okay, because there is a demand for it. Uh, and they are building factories okay so uh, demand is something that's everyone everyone has their eyes on so let's have a look so uh, commercial scale technology driven platforms backed by blue chip customer commitments and we'll have a look at these customers who they are in a minute uh, we view pha as a significant disruptive technology to petrochemical plastics okay so yeah this is all something that i've already mentioned in the first video this basic means is their company it, obviously their product is very important to no uh, note that not only does it biodegrade it doesn't pollute it doesn't leave any residual uh, components that could be toxic in the water uh, compared to other petrochemical plastics okay so that's a, a key point a very important point there okay so it's a hundred percent biodegradable um so nodax is technology backed by rigorous research international testing standards and third party certifications okay so the demand environment remains strong so again this is something we've seen in the uh, on their front page of their website okay they talk about the bio bioplastics are less than one percent of a 500 billion ibatama uh, intense demand blue chip multinational country country uh, sorry customers continues to grow kentucky facility uh, expected to be sold out through the 2025 based on signed and pending contract so this is good news okay so this is uh yeah so this is what everyone's pending on uh, is the scaling and uh and I've said this before, uh, this is sort of my price target. So bear in mind what the price is at the moment. I'm looking at 2025. This is my estimation. Uh, keeping a close eye on how the company goes in the next uh, few quarters or the next year, should we say. Uh, I think by 2025, this company could be uh, at least $100 per share. Okay, so if you're looking at $20 as it is at the moment, so we'll have a look at prices in a minute. Uh, but yeah, $20, uh, just over $20, and you're looking at $100 in the next. So it's a good return, a really good return for investment, and that's the way I'm looking at it. Uh, our growth strategy, eliminate plastic waste from the environment. Okay, so that's a key. That is uh, goes without saying. Align growth expansion with customer demand which is the, like I said, I've always said this is the, the key. Uh, we need to be looking at this to see if they can actually align and meet the demand for uh, what's in the, in the market at the moment. So they've entered into two new customer agreements. Okay, so this is really interesting. This is probably why we've seen an increase in price recently. We've seen lows as low as $15 okay and we've actually gone up to about twenty dollars so just what well, yeah twenty two dollars uh, at the time of recording uh, so um so yeah we've seen a lot of good news uh, and probably this is probably this is something related to it so they've entered into two new customer agreements including mars wrigley and significantly expanding the existing contract with a convert partner okay so the negotiation five new supply agreements one for straws one for cutlery two for films and for one for plastic article Opening new product application avenues of our Nodex technology is cutlery and acquisition, uh, aqueous coatings. They also have partnerships with blue chips, and we'll go down to have a look at those in a minute. The next slide um, uh, with blue chip customers uh, remains in excellent standing. Kentucky Phase 2 capacity extending on track to be expected for the qu for second quarter of 2022 completion. So this is exciting. So this time next year, we should start to see something really quite promising. So this is their customer collaboration where this is we, we talked about this. This is one of a video. I've already done a video on this, but a lot of people worried about this, that PepsiCo uh, was leaving Danima. They had nothing to do with Danima. It was just because uh, they had sold shares in Danima. Uh, and that was for a number of reasons. Uh, and I talked about that in the last video. So I won't go into details here. So as you can still see, they still remain as a strong strong uh customer for calibration in in their in their product okay so they are currently in joint research and development to design develop manufacture and evaluate pha 
base residence for individual layers. Their partnership with Nodax Page expects to enhance Pepsi's ESG initiatives. Okay, so that was PepsiCo. Then we have Bacardi. So they actually have their building, uh, teaming up with Danima on biogradable spirit bottles. Okay, which is good. So Bacardi is to eliminate at least 3,000 tons of plastic currently produced annually. Okay, so this is very, very good. Uh, very good news indeed. So they're the world's most eco-friendly spirit bottles. So Bacardi. So next time you're having a Bacardi, just remember that. And the most uh, eco-friendly spirit bottles uh, will biodegrade in 18 months. Okay, so lie there. nice bit of facts there. As well as the new 100% py biopolymer spirits bottle, Bacardi is also creating a substantially sourced paper bottle by integrating Nodax. Okay. And I also mentioned this on one of my other videos as Mars or Skittles, should we, Mars Wrigley, should we say, uh, the Skittles, for example. So they're actually having a, they have a two-year partnership to develop Nodax for environmentally conscious consumers and retailers. Development for flexible and rigid packaging that reliable breaks down industrial composting facilities and backyard compost units. Okay, first targeted brand is Skittles. Okay, so this works out. This is a two-year partnership, so this really works out well we could go in to see something really, really, really big. So uh, a lot going on here and a lot of it's really, really quite promising. Okay, but yeah, again, we have to go back to say, look, they are still with Pepsi. Okay, it's not to say that Pepsi is going to put all their eggs into one basket. They are working with other competition. Uh, okay, but uh, it's still good that they are with, uh, they are with Danima. So uh, here's a lot of uh, other companies uh, that they are working with. Okay. Uh, and uh, Ellen MacArthur Foundation has mobilized more than 250 companies, including several Danima customers, to pledge 100% of plastic packaging to be reusable, recyclable, or compostable by 2025. Now, Danima has their competition, and uh, I think Danima is on a league. They have a product, a unique product. Uh, and could they be under uh, a threat from other competition? Uh, no. I think there's a lot, and I've said this before, or if I haven't said that, I'm saying it now. There is a lot of, in my personal point of view, there's a lot of room uh, in the market for this. There's no one player here. Uh, there's there needs to be one more, me be more than one player in this market to be able to make this uh, environment much more eco-friendly. And uh, I'm not saying Danima is going to be the first. I'm hoping they are going to be the leaders, the first in the market to push this forward in the next three or four years. Uh, it needs to be done quickly. Uh, and, but I'm quite confident that they will really be one of the tops. Uh, I'm not saying the top, but be really one of the top. And I still think that uh, this is a good value for for my for, for. I'm looking for a good return on my investment uh, in the next few years. At, at least, like I said, hundred dollars I'm looking at by 2025. So, so yeah, I'm I'm excited about this, regardless of all the bad news that's going on. Uh, the but yeah that's the way it is that's the way, that's what my point of view uh this is actually we've seen this before this is a, a little bit on i went through my first video and they've, they've sort of reinforced it here so 10 percent of plastics are recycled that's really quite that's not a lot at all 10 percent incinerated and 80 percent gets put into a landfill okay so just to give you an idea so that 80 percent is a lot really really quite a lot so it's quite uh, quite disturbing actually to see how much plastic we are still b pumping into landfills without actually recycling so let's say uh, we do manage to recycle the percentage of recycling goes up that's good but then when we have a look at this point even if we did get to 60 70 percent 60 70 percent still is a lot but if we've got Danima plastics in there this is all biodegradable and this will be all uh, decomposed within a, a few months okay so just to look at it like that so yeah let's have a look at the next part so the this is a little bit about their uh, biodegradability okay so this is uh, as they've mentioned it's 100 percent renewable okay Com uh, if you look at other products there's always a residue or a, 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 a trace or some other uh of product by product should I say uh, but with PHA or no dax this is actually a hundred percent renewable okay so it's really really important to uh, understand this um so yeah so they've gone on to talk about the renewability how it's a hundred percent uh there's a waste process use uh, 
a waste-free process utilizing 100% of canola oil to ensure optimal sustainability okay so this meets the goal of the full life cycle cycle for plastics without relying on recycling okay so there weren't not so much emphasis on recycling because it would be biodegradable so that's an, another good point so we we'll actually save a lot of money a lot of governments will save a lot of money on that as well so i think everyone all round this is good for everyone this is not this is not bad for anyone this is a little bit on their manufacturing um, process, so we can go through and talk about that. So there, this is actually quite good because actually a couple of people actually a few months asked me about this, and I wasn't able to answer it correctly. But and here it is quite, um, it's really quite well summarised here uh, on the on the manufacturing process. Okay, so they they have a first step, which is a fermentation process, and that soil bacteria combined with the renewable feedstock they have makes pha in a controlled fermentation environment the production of biomass output is a broth which contains this pha and organic material okay so the second st step is a downstreaming processing so they clean out and dry this pha okay at the end of the step we they have a, a slurry powder or a compressed pellet depending on the intended final product uh, and that's 100 percent biodegradable as we said uh, once again results from separation purification and drying and in the third step uh, the final uh, uh, process of the manufacturing is the polymers are added to extruders their reactive extrusion occurs when pha is combined with other inputs allowing the formulation of specific product applications okay so the finished resin it is pelletized packaged and shipped to customers for use in their manufacturing process so uh, this is quite good. This is actually quite handy because what happens is these companies, uh, whether it be Pepsi, whether it be Wrigley's, whatever, uh, they, it comes in a pellet format. Okay, so this is how other companies use it. So they're not having uh, companies, these blue chip companies, are not having to change anything. So this is actually sold to them as a pellet, and out of that they make their plastic molds. Okay, so that's really what it is. This is how they use it at the moment. Okay, with a standard plastic. And there's no change to that, so it's it's quite good for the companies because they don't have to make any investment into new machinery, okay, for for manufacturing their 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 products. Okay, so that's uh, also important to note. Okay, so uh, expanding capacity to capture growth market demand. Okay, so this is actually quite good, and this is quite interesting. This is what I want to have a look at, and this is a little bit about uh, matching the growth uh, of their their intended growth in the forthcoming years okay so uh, here they have the construction of the kentucky phase which is the first part okay so they finished that and now they're actually in the second part uh, okay so initiated in late 20 uh, so into the production stage and they should be finishing construction by yeah at the big middle of the uh, end of 2022 uh, beginning of 2023 and it should be in full production by that time Okay, so around about 2023. Uh, so yeah, there's some still some time to go. There's a lot of time to go. Uh, quite slow, um, but yeah, there could be. It would be nice to get there quicker. Okay, it would be really nice to get there quicker. So that's the uh, a little bit of the second phase. So this is the second phase. This is how it's looking. So this is a little bit. They've highlighted really what they have here. So they have their fermentation chiller building here. Okay, uh, and I think, yeah, I don't know what the difference is. Okay, yeah, so they've just, uh, yeah, so December 2020 and then May 2021, which is now, it showed that it's, uh, it's been fully built there, uh, this part. Uh, again, they've looked at the pre construction of and the construction progress, again, comparing of the mm, phase two. So, yeah, they're, they're showing the progress here, which is, which is good. So, yeah, good, excellent. Uh, this is the, again, more. Here we go. So we've got more uh, construction being done here. We would have think it would have been done a little bit quicker than what it is. It has been. It's, it's getting there slowly, but uh, it's good that they're showing the progress of this. This is good. So let's go into numbers and let's have a look at the key. So look, without going into the details, we can have a look at the sales. Uh, sales have increased, okay, but let's go and have a look at the key messages which we want to have a look at. So their first quarter is actually in line with expectations, which is good. So they're not below on anything. So if you have a look at the uh, the first quarter of 2020 and the first quarter of 2021, 
2021 rather uh, everything is looking good apart from the adjusted gross profit which actually decreased 3.9 um, uh, million but uh, compared to 4.1 million okay uh, but then again they've spent a lot more on research development this year uh, on the first quarter than they did compared to uh, last year uh, or the first quarter okay so uh, a lot more money being pumped in uh, for the for the uh, research and development and, and construction okay so yeah they've talked about this they've said that the uh, the pha increased to two to 29 percent of revenue versus the 19 percent in the first fourth quarter of 2020 and the two percent in the first quarter of 2020 okay so the costs are influenced by initial inefficiencies related to ramp up kentucky phase facility investments in headcount and salaries to support r d efforts and future expansion plans uh, and public company costs okay so uh, uh, they have an uh, now reporting a adjusted EBITDA of a negative 2.3 billion uh, 2.3 million uh, 2.3 million it is yeah I'm not sure that's two no it can't be two three point it must be a little more than that uh, but anyway we're in negative here we're in negative so uh, in terms of volumes so we have a look at the volume so here this is the volumes uh the uh, model assumptions for 2021 which is what we want to see so volumes so the first phase production is at around about 50 percent of the nameplate capacity at the beginning of the year and they expected to scale this by 100 percent by the end, year end okay by the end of this year the first phase turnaround is scheduled for the later later part of the, the second quarter of 2021 to uh to uh the bottleneck and accelerate scale up okay so the first phase two production expected to commence in the second quarter of 2022 okay uh yeah and they go starting to look at their uh, operating costs as well okay so we won't go into detail they'll look at their cash taxes and the capital expenditures the expenditures are now expected to be 120 million compared to 145 million so that's an increase from the prior range okay Primarily as a result of inflation, okay, in the construction materials. So that's an interesting point to note as well. So this is a little bit on summarizing their growth plans. So this is good. I really love this presentation. We have really made this clear cut for investors. Uh, so this is, I, I like to see this. So summarizing their growth plans. So they grow with the customer's demand on the products. The uh, driven command continues to be significant. We will grow to meet the demand. This is key. Like I said, this is really, really key. They say they will, and we need to make sure they do. This is really key. We, we follow this uh, on the next coming quarters to see if they're in line. At the moment, they are in line, which is good. We look to de-risk our growth, focus on contracted volumes, uh, customer demand in place before production begins. Okay, so this is sort of sort of saying, right, let's get our customers on board before we actually start um, um, producing anything. Okay, so, uh, yeah. Uh, unit economics and investor return will drive our decision. Okay, so we're, we're a return-focused company. Our companies are well above our cost of capital. Okay, so they're accelerating and increasing and expansion plans, uh, timing and size of future expansions will follow a similar framework okay so yeah that's a good so we won't go into the rest of it you can guys you want to have a look at the rest of the information that's on here we'll go into more details about the uh, the actual price the revenue but like i said everything's looking good revenues increase everything's increasing okay but like i said there has uh, been a slight decrease uh, there has more be more money into market research but that's normal at these sort of stages of the company because they're in their infancy stage should we say uh, so there's a lot uh, still a lot ahead of them so this is normal so uh, but it's good it's looking promising now let's go in and let's have a look at price now this is price uh, people say is it a good price to get in yeah the other day uh, i got in at 16 dollars i bought more sorry at 16 dollars uh, so my average has been brought down a lot of people actually got in here so that actually the average is around about 16 dollars so it makes me jealous uh, I got in this company quite a few months ago when prices were, I saw were going up, so it's averaging on the way up. Uh, but yeah, that's the way it is. I can still see that we could have, um, we've got some resistance, support and resistance level. And it looks like we have begun on this downtrend for quite a while now, where we did have an up on the in March. And then from really from the March of these high, we've had uh, high lows all the way down. We've had a real lower downtrend and now we've we've 
actually, I would consider that we've got to what we would consider a good support level here, which is around about the $16 mark. The key component now here is uh, uh, how these levels play out, how this plays out. Uh, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if we have a pullback. Okay, well, I wouldn't be surprised if we had a pullback, but I also wouldn't be surprised if we had to start to have a, an upturn. Okay, the results have been good. We're on track uh, uh, or could consolidate for a while during these levels. Uh, and uh, like I said, I'm in the long term, so I'm not too worried about what's happening on a daily basis. I just want to make sure that I'm in, in uh, taking advantage of these prices. The price that it is at the moment, regardless of if you bought at this low, the price at the moment, to me personally, I think it's a bargain. I think this company is actually undervalued. People would disagree with me. <coughs> Sorry. People would disagree with me. And the reason why I say they disagree with me is because they're not creating enough. They do not have a, a solid revenue uh, at the moment. They're not in profit. So, uh, But based on their market cap, I think uh, this is a company that should be at least uh, $35, $35. And it's had it. $22 at the moment, so at its current price. So, yeah, we'll see. Like I said, if you're looking at the next few years, $100 is your price target, and then you're buying at the moment. This is, I think, uh, personally, from my point of view, I think it's a good investment. Uh, in terms of the moving average, if we have a look at the moving averages, we're below the moving averages. Uh, sorry, we're actually sat on top of moving averages. This is actually the one hour chart. Uh, the RSI, if we have a look at the RSI, RSI would suggest that we're slightly overbought, which would suggest we could have a little bit of a pullback, which is actually what's indicated at the moment. So, yeah, we could have a little bit of a pullback. If we have a look at the day chart, let's go in and have a look at the day chart. So, yeah, this is a little bit what the day chart looks like. And, uh, yeah, so this actually level here. So, we have a look at the Fibonacci retracement, okay, here. This probably would, I would suggest this was actually a, a good level to break through. This is actually quite a good resistance level, actually, looking at this. I guess we've hit this one, two, just so it happens it lines up quite well. So this is actually a key point at the moment. So let's see, uh, we've actually finished today. Well, today is Friday. We finished above that level slightly. So we should see some nice levels back up to this level, which is the $27 level. And if we might, I would suggest, suspect we could have some consolidation uh round about those levels okay like we have had here okay but either way people ask me is it worth buying yes personally in my point of view yes so guys that's a little bit on the company a little bit on Danima. it's a little bit longer than uh, longer winded but i haven't done a video for quite a few days now i thought i owed it to my viewers to good do a good real good uh detailed update on Danima. I hope you've enjoyed it guys and let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, give me a big thumbs up if you've liked this video and if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe guys that really helps my channel grow. Guys thank you for watching speak to you soon and take care bye bye now.